Hey everyone. So as we're learning, natural derived mushrooms are changing the future of the healthcare landscape, treating medical conditions like anxiety, depression, and now potentially breast cancer. Over 410,000 women in the U.S. alone are diagnosed with breast cancer every single year. So how could this disease be changing moving forward? Find out now in our latest podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Dale's Report podcast. I'm happy to be joined here today with two very smart, sophisticated doctors. Let's first begin with Dr. Fatima Rivas. She's from LSU. Dr. Rivas, thanks for joining us. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today. Big week coming up for you in the LSU Tigers. Mr. Joe Burrow playing in Super Bowl 56. I'm sure a lot of fans down at the university are pretty happy with his success, I would think. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also joining us is uh, Dr. Michelle Martinez from UCC School of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Martinez, I appreciate you obviously contact or sitting down with us here today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us today. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to have you both on because uh, obviously we work closely with uh, Revive Therapeutics and uh, interesting news this week. And I want to begin with you, Dr. Uh, Fatima Rivas. Uh, it's been reported that your team at LSU have discovered a new treatment for triple negative breast cancer identified as ergosterol peroxide, uh, which for my viewers is a natural product from a specific mushroom. So walk me through, how does this work? And why is this, I guess, particular compound promising when treating uh, breast cancer? Yeah, so this is actually a team effort with Dr. Martinez. We've been working for about uh, three years, a little bit more than that, but, you know, this was extremely exciting for a group to um, identify a potential compound. So typically when we identify natural products, um, they have specific biological function. And okay. so for triple negative breast cancer, as um, you probably have seen that in, uh, in publications that we have reported uh, these findings, um, is one of those cancers that is very difficult to treat, okay? And so that's okay. the major problem with um, triple negative breast cancer because it doesn't have the specific uh, receptors, if you will, that are actually able to respond to the current treatments that are available mm. uh, to patients, to can- uh, breast cancer patients. And so having an additional natural product an additional uh, compound actually allows us to be much more specific in the cancer subtype that we're treating and is extremely promising in the sense that we have identified that this compound does not um, induce the toxicity in normal tissue, but it does uh, have selectivity for tissue that is uh, ill, such as triple negative breast cancer. Wow, that's interesting. So obviously a long road ahead for research awaits, although IND enabling students, uh, studies, excuse me, for FDA clinical trials are currently advancing. So uh, does this research, I guess, have the potential to be fast-tracked by the FDA? There's certainly possibility for that, especially for natural products. There's precedence for that, uh, simply because they have been already... um, if it's a specific type of natural product that has already been in humans, say it's a tea or an herbal supplement that has previously been used in human cons- consumption, then that has uh, a faster track, absolutely. So Dr. Martinez, uh, we now enter the picture Revive Therapeutics who signed an exclusive license agreement with the research team uh, represented by you at UCC School of Business back in August. So. Where does the uh, Revive fit into this whole picture and why, I guess, having their association is important? Um, so basically, we, as Fatima mentioned, we've been working with this um, mushroom for the past three years. And yeah. back in 2019, we submitted a, a provisional patent application describing and disclosing all of the wonderful benefits that ergosterol peroxide had. In February 2020, we were able to successfully um, secure the uh, international patent. And in August, uh, Revive Therapeutics uh, licensed the patent application. And this is a fantastic step forward because we knew that working with the mushroom, even though it does have its advantages, realistically, we could not take it into the clinic. Therefore, we needed a... uh, specific compound which would enable us 
that uh, specific objective. And once Revive Therapeutics um, was involved in the mix and in, in developing the, uh, our goals to take this into the clinic, it became a step closer towards that, um, specific professional goal. Um, it, it has been fantastic. Uh, we have been able then to take it a step further with uh, Revive Therapeutics. We're now de-risking the technology in efforts to then go closer to the IMD and uh, clinical uh-huh. studies that lie ahead. So they advance everything as far as research by you getting into the clinics now. Based on what you're seeing so far, how promising is this compared to like um, traditional, uh, almost like cancer drugs or chemotherapy drugs that you've seen in the past based on the research that be, has been conducted so far? So our preliminary studies are very, very compelling, specifically because of the toxicity issue. We see that the normal cells or the non um Affected tissue does not, is yeah. not affected at all. It's not toxic to this healthy tissue. And that's one of the biggest concerns in drug development. The other. Uh, Why is that? Why is that? Well, specifically because, uh, normally chemotherapeutics are just a generalized, um, therapy, which are right. not specific unless they're directed to specific targets. However, even that way, they tend to be toxic to all cells. And that's why the hair falls off. That's why you have all of the secondary effects. And in the case of, of this particular natural products, all the tests that we have run, even in uh, mice, we can see that um, the toxicity is very, very minimal, which is very, very promising. The other thing is that um, women that typically have triple negative breast cancer tend to develop chemo resistance. And this is, again, because there's not a specific target where these therapies are directed to. So it's like a generalized chemical uh, bomb that is being given to them right. in order to treat this terrible cancer. And with ergosterol peroxide, we have been able then to also successfully bypass that and have a specific area where we know that it will target the cancer cell and therefore be selective, and therefore treat the cancer, bypassing uh, chemo resistance in the future. So oh. the additional benefits, we also see effects on cancer stem cells, which are tumor-initiating yeah. cells. And that's also very exciting news because these are very difficult to kill and treat cells within the tumors. So there's different areas in which this particular compound has a lot of promise. Why is it so, because I was reading more about this uh, regarded to this particular cancer, why has it been so difficult in the past to kill certain tumors? Um, and how many people, I guess, in general, uh, across North America are affected by bre- breast cancer every single year? So breast cancer is the f- in, in the U.S. and in Puerto Rico is the first uh, cause of cancer in women. And it's specifically in Puerto Rico is the first cause of cancer death in women in Puerto Rico. Wow. wow. And uh, it is a very difficult disease to treat because it's not only about the tumor. It is involved. It involves many, many other cells and the immune system. So it is a very challenging disease to treat. Mm-hmm. However, uh, studies are on their way to try to keep all of these different uh, elements within our study depth. So we are able then to uh, be able to develop a very successful therapeutic in the future for this particular disease. Yeah. It's just another example I'm learning as I go down this road of learning with some of these natural derived mushrooms and how it's changing so many things and so many aspects of life. Um, but according to give to you, you an doc- idea, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I like go to ahead, give you also um, a perspective. So globally, we have about 2.05 million uh, cases of breast cancer. And so with okay. the triple negative breast cancer, we're talking about uh, 20%. So it's about 410,000 cases of breast cancer. So it is a very large uh, group of women Big. and men that are yeah. affected by it. So according to you, Dr. Rivas, nearly half of patients uh, in the U.S. with cancer reported that 
Uh, they began taking dietary supplements after receiving a diagnosis of cancer. So before we get into certain questions, like walk me through what usually happens when, say, someone comes in, they're diagnosed with cancer. Uh, what pertaining to their lifestyle changes immediately and what are some of the things that um, they start to change when it comes to the overall lifestyle after being diagnosed? I think it be, so it depends on the cancer subtype. Okay, so in the United States we have so for women, it's breast cancer, lung, and colorectal. So about 50% right. are going to be diagnosed of, you know, so about 39 to 40%, so almost 50% of the population is going to be affected by cancer. And okay. so there is this ideology, and this is more of cultural. So, so you assume that maybe if you drink a tea or if you take a supplement, perhaps that's going to enhance um, the capacity to you to fight. Um, and you've seen this with COVID. You know, people are taking a lot of supplements uh, because they have that belief that that's going to support their immunity Absolutely. and therefore help Absolutely. them. And so it's the same with uh, it's the same. We see that very similar trends. Uh, with cancer patients where they have that belief, you know, their neighbors tell them, oh, I know of someone who took this, and so you perhaps should take that supplement. And so that's something that um, is a cultural factor in life, uh, but definitely um, diet is important. Uh, the problem with yeah, supplements course. is that once you start a <clears throat> specific um, uh, protocol in the clinic, uh, you need to tell your physician uh, and your oncologist the type of supplements that you're taking because uh, these supplements are very, could be uh, very um, strong and actually interact with the chemotherapeutics that you're taking. As Dr. Martinez alluded, uh, you have the one right. problem that we have in the clinic where there's resistance, but it's not only just resistance, it's also depending on the cancer subtype, whether you're going to have um, a, a chemotherapeutic treatment that is going to be selective. So based off of that, uh, what does this then present for traditional drug therapies, knowing that, um, I guess, current chemotherapy treatments can't really distinguish between cancer and non-cancerous tissues, if that makes sense. And I'll ask you that question, Dr. Rivas. So, so what's, what's, what we see right now in the clinic is, in the, at least in the past uh, 20 years, we have seen a development of what we call targeted therapeutics. And this is what you see in the trends is the most expensive treatment, um, but it is very yeah. selective. And what that means is that there is a specific gene or a specific protein in that cancer subtype that is overexpressed. And so the treatment only targets that specific uh, protein. And so it doesn't affect the other cells. So that is a targeted selected uh, therapeutic agent. Um, with the chemotherapeutic that Dr. Martinez was talking about, that refers to uh, treatments that are global. So they are inhibiting processes that are biologically relevant, uh, such as protein synthesis, where it inhibits every single protein in the cell. And that is necessary for cell survival, for every single cell. So it's not specific to breast, it's not specific to stomach or a specific organ, it just is global. And so it's affecting the cells that are dividing more rapidly. And as she alluded, that's what you see hair loss and you see all these side effects yeah. that are not um, ideal for any patient. So moving forward, Dr. Martinez, do you foresee a time where ergosterol peroxide or another fungi-based uh, compound can replace chemotherapy uh, as a primary frontline treatment for breast cancer? So we're currently working very hard to meet very strict deadlines because this is such a good and promising therapy yeah, in which course. we would uh, definitely like to do it sooner than later um right now uh, is how, how many times you get asked this question every day right <laughs> so many times this is something that never misses and i think a realistic time frame would be 10 years just because it is a natural product and we can do yeah. um yeah. a fast track however it we still wrote ahead because we're still in the initial preclinical stages of this um adventure so yeah I will add ahead, to Dr. that. It, it, mm -hmm. I will add to that that you never know. You know, this is a moving train, right? And so you could find something. Uh, you know, with the derivatives, with the support or revive that we're getting. You know, we could yeah. find a derivative that behaves a hundred times better, right? And that would certainly fast track. So it is a moving uh, a train, 
and we hope that we could move as fast as possible. But yes, we have to be realistic, and um, you know, it's it, it's difficult to to give you an exact uh, time frame. I'd like to ask you both a question before we go, and this is a question for either one. You can either one of you can answer um, first, but. Do you think we're on the brink of change when it comes to Western medicine, just where we are, like as far as the land? Like when you look at, in addition to breast cancer and what a lot of companies like Revive are doing within this space for mental health and stuff like that, there's just these new forms of medication that are providing incredible data, incredible efficacy, and it's a long-weighted, obviously, change in the overall landscape. But I'd like to get an idea as to what you think of this new medicine that we're looking at and what the future holds for uh, people, uh, not only in North America, but globally. Do you think we're on the brink of change uh, here in 2022? And I'll start with you first, Dr. Martinez. I definitely think we are. It's, it's this, what we're studying, Ganoderma, has been studied for the past thousand years. This is not, nothing new. This has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for millennia. However, um, what we are trying to uh, successfully achieve is to bring evidence-based research and uh, science uh, foundation uh, from the wonderful effects that these compounds bring. And I think that is the, men the correct mentality. We do need to bring scientific evidence to show and of course, mechanism of action to show the advantages, the wonderful advantages that nature gives us. Because this, as I, as I already said, this has been studied for many, many years. However, there's lack of evidence. And definitely, right. I think we are on the right That's track changing. here. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's actually uh, very advantageous that we are in this point in time that we're doing this. It's very exciting for us. Dr. Rivas, like, what are your thoughts? And like, what are a lot of your peers in the industry saying too? Are they warming up and keeping an open mind towards the overall industry? Oh, absolutely. I think the industry yeah. is just starting. I mean, right now there is, it's a revolution, just to give you an idea, because we finally have the tools that we didn't have 20 years ago. And so mm -hmm. we have the exact tools, so mass spectrometry. A lot of the development that has occurred in the past uh, decade um, has given us the tools that now we can actually be able to determine mode of action that was very difficult before. And that's something that um, FDA requires, or at least it, it needs to have a little substantial evidence, as uh, Dr. Martinez indicated, evidence that uh, shows how the, the mechanism of action of the specific compound. Um, but we are also using now uh, mining data sets that we didn't have the power. So artificial intelligence is coming into the game, uh, what it can enable you to predict things that we couldn't do in the past. And I think industry is capitalizing on that. So uh, the pharmaceutical industry is pretty, it's going very strong and, uh, and they have not used natural products per se extensively in the past few years, simply because of uh, financial problems. They just didn't have the finances yeah. to do this type of work. Mm -hmm. I interviewed somebody last week that was telling me by 2040, our uh, brain will be connected through the internet, through AI, and will be a billion times more smarter than the average human here in 2022. So I was like, I think I just want to live in the moment. <laughs> this sounds a little fast and a little much, but definitely what's happening is there's lots of change obviously happening in so many ways related to this industry. But uh, I applaud both of you for the initiative that you're doing. And uh, most importantly, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. It's right. it's very time. exciting. Thank you. You're welcome. And honestly, appreciate you taking the time. Um, keep in touch, okay? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for inviting us.